Hi everybody, and thanks for joining me today. So, getting closer to the far right hand edge now. Almost done with the Zora link. I think we might get a bit of Romani the Ranch Girl done today, I'm not sure. I did stitch part of her bow yesterday, so just sort of depends what's exactly in this uh, diagonal. Yeah, so I hope the weather is nice where you are. We got uh, three inches of snow dumped on us yesterday. Uh, uh, my husband had to go and uh, shovel it this morning. Oh, I remember the year that uh, he hurt his Achilles and I had to do it. And he insisted, oh, it's my job, I'll do it. I said, yeah, but you're in crutches, how? You know? <laughs> and... Uh, it wasn't a lot, so I did it anyway, but, uh, so the problem is I kind of have to put, um, my weight into the, uh, into the shovel. So like the handle's sort of like against my middle and I have to kind of push with all my weight. And then the problem is if you, um, you hit a crack in the sidewalk, your feet kind of almost leave the ground and you're not sure if you're going to face plant or not, <laughs> if your feet are going to come back down. Ooh. And unfortunately, of course, when it's covered in snow, you can't see, you know, where the crack is, the deeper crack is. So then, yeah, like it's not like the spots between the sidewalk um, squares are a problem. It's when it actually cracks and shifts, you can end up with, you know, quite a bit of difference, so sort of a ledge. And yeah, when you're, uh, when your shovel hits it, if you're going fast enough, yeah. Ooh. You have to be careful not to send yourself flying. Oh dear. Oh, when it's really heavy, we use the snow blower, but yeah. When it's just a sort of if it's under generally like five inches, often just use the it depends how heavy it is too, like today's. The snow out there is really, really puffy and not dense and heavy, so it wasn't too bad. Because, yeah, there is a difference. Like, five inches of dense snow and five inches of soft, fluffy snow are not the same. <laughs> the same in, uh, in weight, so there is that. So, yeah, we passed the 60% mark yesterday, so woohoo. Like I said, my goal is 6% more by the end of the month, or maybe 6 and a bit, because 2 thirds is 66.66, right? So that would leave me at the 2 thirds mark, but we'll see. Because, yeah, last month I wanted to hit halfway done, but I lost some stitching time due to illness. So, so far we're doing good. Oh. So my little traction pillow thing I mentioned, it helped my neck a bit, but it's still bugging me. And I decided I'm going to try something different. I've been going to the chiropractor for years. And usually I go every, you know, once or twice a year, sometimes even less. At one time I went two years in between visits because I just didn't need it. I go when it flares up. But anyway, lately I've been finding I go and it only gives me relief for like a week sometimes just a few days. So it's just like at the point where it's like, this is just not working for me anymore. So I, uh, I'm going to try some physio and uh, acupuncture and see if that helps. Um, acupuncture really helped my husband. He, he had a back injury from a car accident and yeah, nothing else seemed to help. And, uh, like he didn't want to be taking painkillers all the time and neither do I, right? So yeah, finally he asked our doctor, is there anything else we can try short of surgery? And uh, he said, well, are you willing to try something a little, you know, different? And he said, at this point, I'm willing to try just about anything, you know? 
And so, yeah, he referred him for acupuncture and three visits, and he basically has no pain anymore. So, yeah, I figured I should, maybe I should give it a try too. Mine isn't from an injury. Mine is just uh, chronic. I've had it since I was a kid. Like, it got exacerbated when I had my last car accident, but I had treatments and then it was fine for like, you know, a year or so. I don't think that's it. It's the same issue I've been dealing with since, yeah, elementary school, unfortunately. Yeah, and I, I looked into our insurance covers some of it, so I figure, you know what, I might as well give it a shot and see if it helps. Okay, tie this off. Oops. Come on. Go like a millimeter over there. My hand didn't want to cooperate. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, so I did this one and then I did that one too. Yeah. lot of threads parked here so that can make it a little trickier to uh, pull them out but I will persevere yeah once again tons of blues here kind of like in the very beginning of the project because again it's more background in this area like it was in the beginning so the sort of twilight sky and such Okay, so I have two threads of this. Let's see how long they are. That one is medium. That one is, yeah, they're both kind of medium, so I guess that's why I decided to keep both of them. See if I can sort of cover all the stitches in this area with these threads, and then I don't have to add another. Sort of if I had one that was really long, I might tie one of these off, but I don't. So I will just carry on with both for now. Oops, try that again. Okay. And then park. And then I'm going to have to start a new thread. Oops, for that color there. Okay, 796. Just going to take a peek. Okay, I'll get a full length piece because you can see that one carries on for quite a ways. So it looks like I'll have to grab my envelope. Yeah, there we go. Weird, I ended up with some trimmed ends in this envelope. I think probably when I was pulling out a piece of floss last time, it must have got stuck to it from on my couch or something. <laughs> I tried to put all my ends in a little jar beside me, but sometimes they get stuck to my clothes. So yeah, they just sort of end up everywhere like pet hairs. <laughs> thinking we should be able to reach ah that's where that needle went yeah one of them flipped out of my hand and I couldn't find it and I went on the floor with a magnet but uh, there it was. it was stuck to one of my uh my other magnets here I think I may end up ending one of these threads off either way. Because there may still be more floss than, uh, than stitches here. Hmm. 
Pardon me. But yeah, there's a fair, some bigger blocks of color in this area over here and then down at the bottom, sort of where um, the main lynx hat sort of goes over his shoulder. Yeah, those greens are some larger blocks of color, so they should go fairly quickly. So who knows, before the end of this month, I might even be starting my last pass across this pattern. That would be pretty cool. Okay, this is not very long. We will see if it's enough to uh, do these stitches that I've highlighted or not. It'll be close, I think. We may just be able to get this. I think we will. Nice. I won't have to add a new piece for here. Now, I obviously, this is not going to stay threaded. It's way too short, so I'm going to unthread it, and I sort of have to do all these stitches over to the left of it before I can before I can carry on, so yeah, there's no point in leaving that on the needle. Now this is another short one, but I'm gonna get back to it very quickly, so I'm gonna try and leave it threaded. So there's that aspect of it too. Okay, so again, check. Okay, that's a long one. That one's not too shabby, so I'm going to carry it over to the right to where there's four stitches of this in a row because I'm thinking, oh, if it would cooperate, I'm thinking this thread will be long enough to do those four stitches as well before I have to tie it off, so I will do that. There we are, okay. Yeah, I realize now the uh, sun is getting taller. We may have to buy him a new bed soon. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, we got him a... When he grew out of his toddler bed, we got him a bunk bed. It was funny. It was actually cheaper to buy bunk bed than to buy a single bed. Go figure, right? But anyway, we didn't set up the second bed. We made it almost like a canopy. And he can put his, uh, his stuffed animals up there because he has so many of them. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, now he's almost getting too tall for it. Okay, so this is the short one. Ah, good. See, because I knew I was getting back to it quickly, it was fine to leave that one threaded. But yeah, he's uh, he's almost as tall as his dad now. He's only, I think, three inches shorter. And that bed would definitely be too short for my husband. So <laughs> yeah, I think we may have to, uh, I said we'll have to build some shelving or something or I don't know, maybe we'll make um, what we did when I was a kid. We made hammocks for the uh, stuffed animals. So great big ones that hung up off the ceiling. And uh, yeah, they uh, it actually worked pretty well. It was kind of nice because it gave a little soundproofing too. Because we found that those rooms could be quite sort of echoey. And 
yeah, that kind of helped. So it's kind of worked well. It worked for soundproofing and it also kind of displayed them a little, which we liked. So, okay. I'm trying to see if I have any leftover pieces the right length, but I don't. So and we'll start a new one. Yeah, I have quite a few leftover pieces of this color, just how it happens to work out, but I'm sure elsewhere I will end up with a lot of scattered confetti pieces and then I'll use those up then. So yeah. Sometimes I let, like I say, I end up with a lot of them and they wait for a while, but eventually I find places to use them, so. Oh yeah, this is the thing here next to his sword. I'm thinking, oh! Oh no, I thought I put it in the wrong place. No, I didn't. I'm thinking it might be his bow. It's kind of a brownish sort of wood colors. So I'm thinking that must be what it is. Because it's the wrong shape to be the shield, because the shield is sort of, yeah, below the hilt there, so... Oh, no, one, two, three. Okay, I thought I miscounted, but no, I didn't. Okay. Ooh. Oh, I finally found that envelope I couldn't find the other day. It was actually under my tub. <laughs> I had neglected to put it back in the envelope back in the tub the last time I'd used it, and uh, yeah. As things got shifted around it and it actually ended up under the tub so it took a bit of searching to find it because I sort of went through both tubs seeing if I put it back in the wrong place and nope and then I thought okay just on a whim I checked um my master set of tubs in case I'd accidentally thought I'd got a zero and put it away and it wasn't there either so I was getting really bewildered I searched some more and then yeah I found an envelope under the tub and that's what it was so because I was thinking I know I have this color it wasn't like a color that I thought I'd bought and hadn't bought because I've had that happen before <laughs> but uh yeah I knew I'd started that that color so there had to be an envelope for it somewhere it's brighter wine red color so I'm not going to pin stitch it I draw it across the back so it won't show through Okay, three, three, seven, one. Okay, so since I have a bunch of little pieces, I'm going to use one up for this one in the corner, and then I'm going to start a bigger, longer piece for the other section. So I could have just done this and carried it, but I decided to sort of break them up. It just sort of made sense to me to do that. Either way would work, though. Do the same thing. Draw that across the back. Yeah, so if you have a better idea of what it could be, this thing that I'm stitching, if it's not his uh, bow, let me know. <laughs> Sometimes I can't tell until after I finish stitching something, too. It's funny how that is. Yeah, one of my friends was working on, I think it was Room with a View, and uh, she said, yeah, she got to the corner of the window and couldn't figure out what it was she was stitching because it's sort of, the lines of color seemed to be broken up more, and it turned out, oh, there was a cobweb in that corner in the picture, which she hadn't noticed from looking at the whole picture overall. Yeah. So it was one of those, this looks weird, but I'll trust the pattern and it should turn out. And she wasn't the first one to stitch it. So it's quite a popular one, but every time I see it, it's stunning. It's a heaven and earth designs. Yeah. Okay, 
okay so just adding more threads to this uh, whack ton here okay 3802 Still enough left of that. There's two strands there, so I'll save them. did I do? Oh, yeah, I started this in the wrong place. Whoops. Ah, silly me. Okay, let's see if I can undo this or not. Sometimes I can. Sometimes I can't. The loop starts can be a little tougher to undo, I find. If you've done them from the front, that's the one drawback. Starting them from the front. Yeah, that is just not. If I keep yanking on threads back there, I'm afraid I'm going to. I'm going to pull the wrong one and mess things up. So I will. I will cut this and restart. These are all similar looking and I didn't I didn't double check with my grid lines like I normally do until I'd put the couple of stitches in and then realized something looked wrong. So I suppose one drawback when you don't go row by row. It uh, does mean it is easier to go to the wrong row sometimes, but uh, I find I don't make this mistake that often, so. No matter what method you use, you're going to make mistakes sometimes, right? Yeah, we're not machines. Although it's funny, I tell that to my kid. He can be quite hard on himself when we make mistakes, you know. But I say, you know what, even machines do. I said, you know, computers crash and machines jam and, yeah, absolutely nothing. Nothing is perfect. 
nobody expects you to be perfect, you know, and you couldn't be even if you tried because you're human. Ah, oh, darn it. Why did you do that? Man. Okay, let's see how far from it the knot is. Okay, I can still do the next stitch without the knot showing on the this side, so... What I'm gonna do is skip around with it a little bit to make sure the knot stays on the back. I could cut it out again, but I really don't wanna do that. Hmm. And the knot is really tiny, so it's not gonna make like a lump that's visible on the front, so. I'll just kinda make it work. Feel that as soon as I pull my finger away that it pulled one of those strands out of the eye of the needle that won't work I can start pin stitching. I can see that these are darker colors here, so yeah. I prefer pin stitching. I find it's a little less bulk on the back. If you have a lot of threads being ended off because of confetti, yeah, and you draw them all along the back, then I find they can get quite thick. So the pin stitching kind of helps with that, and I find it a little bit more secure too. It is much harder to pull pin stitches out than, especially by accident, than it is to pull it out when it's been drawn along the back. So, of course, the drawback is if you do it wrong, then it's much harder to remove. <laughs> it's always a trade-off, right? Yeah. Okay, so back to this color. Okay, yeah, this is the one with the knot, so... Yeah, okay, so if I bring it now, the knot will end up on the front. So I'm going to tack it over here and then go back to working with it. That ensured that knot is along that carry there on the back. So, like I said, if I was going to be a perfectionist, I would have cut the thread out, started a new one, but the knot was so tiny that I decided to just deal with it. So there's the hilt of his sword all done. I'm not sure if we see the other end of his sword on the other end of the pattern or not. Or 
or if the Goron link is covering it up. <laughs> I could carry down here, but it's a bit further than I like to carry. So I'm going to just end this off and restart. Okay. Let's see how long this thread is here. Ah, this one is going to carry for a bit, it looks like. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so I finished watching Cold Case, kind of bittersweet. I really liked that show. Yeah, it got canceled due to lower ratings by the end, but I don't know why. It was uh, one of my favorites. I wouldn't mind if they uh, if they rebooted that one. They rebooted Law & Order after, oh geez, over 10 years off the air, yeah. Because, I mean, it's one of those shows that has a basic formula that you can plug into. And we found, like, the, the lives of the main characters had some arcs, but it's very episodic, so yeah. You could change the characters and it would still work. I mean, Law & Order went through how many cast changes and it still worked because, yeah. The same basic here's the mystery and then them solving it and yeah okay so i carried it all the way down to there Okay, I think I'm going to end up with multiple threads here. We'll see. Maybe not. Okay, what I'm going to try is I'm going to do this color first. Okay, so I'm going to take all of these threads aside. I'm not going to be working them for a while. piece was just way too fuzzy to cooperate. Okay, gotta fill in a few here. Oh yeah, we're gonna be playing musical threads a bit here, I think. Another dark purple. <laughs> yes, thinking, man, before we know it, it'll be Easter. Time just flies. <clears throat> Hell yeah, this thumb of mine. <laughs> I got some kind of drier, rougher skin on it, and yeah, it tends to do that. It's very, very irritating. Yeah, I remember um, Easter 2020 was basically locked down, and uh, I forgot to buy uh, an egg decorating kit when I was at the store, and I wasn't going to go to the store just for that, you know. I was trying to go to the grocery sort of as little as possible. So, uh, yeah, we went uh, online to see what we could use and uh, uh, what was it that made a sort of golden yellow uh, turmeric, I think? Yeah, and, um, 
and uh, I found some uh, frozen berries and I boiled those up. So we use that to make the purple. And uh, yeah, fortunately we had some green food coloring so we could make those ones. And yeah, was there one other that? No, I think we had green and blue, so we did those. Yeah, if we'd had blue and red, we could have made purple that way, but we didn't, so. Yeah, but anyway, yeah, we managed to sort of cobble that together, so we still had our Easter eggs that year, so. Ooh. Okay, so I filled that in just so I could do this color here. So I'm going to start from the left. I usually like to start from the right hand, sort of work my way in on long rows of color like this, but just because, I mean, no particular reason. It's just sort of that's the way I've always done it. Maybe because I'm right-handed. If I was working from the other side, I'd probably go the other way, but... Yeah, but this way it just makes more sense because after these two rows, it's going to be over here more. And that way I have less of a long carry along the back. Try to be efficient with my thread when I can. Yes, yeah, someone was saying on my Insta, the other day about how you know they love how all the little x's come together to make a picture it's like yeah i find that really satisfying too i'm not someone who can free form draw i can't paint i can't draw no good at it but uh yeah this i can do you know making different pixels <laughs> come together basically like they're stitches but they act like pixels right So the stitches that are sort of over here in the corner will be done with a separate thread. Yeah. I have some shorter ones for that. So I'll do that then. Again, I gotta fill in some here. So I'm gonna just divide those again. I don't think I'm gonna be doing a lot of stitches. Yeah, I'm just trying to do enough here that I can do all of these end stitches here without closing anything in. So we will see.
red card is trying to escape on me there. <laughs> So I didn't bother carrying because I had a short piece. I actually have a second short piece for that other sort of lone stitch by itself of this color. So that's why I chose to do that. Use them both up rather than start a brand new piece for just two stitches. Trying not to stitch over my grid line there. Makes it a little easier to remove later. Although, still fairly easy. That's the nice thing about that sulky metallic thread. You can't pierce it with the needle, so it slides out. Yeah, I used ordinary sewing thread before, and I don't recommend that. It'll do in a pinch, but it's, yeah. Removing it later was accompanied by a lot of creative English. <laughs>
you know, came unthreaded. And I don't like bending over to try and thread it from the other side, especially when it's that short. So just pull it back and thread it from this side. Yeah, I had for a while, I had a um, stitching set up that was called Stitcher's Wonder. That uh, it was a scroll frame on a on a stand. But the problem was I found you couldn't turn it all the way around. And this was before I learned how to uh, begin and end threads from the front. So I was having to bend over every time to the side, every time I needed to end a thread. And uh, yeah, it took a toll on my back after a while. Yeah, I try to watch my posture when I'm stitching. You know, I have pillows behind me to keep me from slouching over my work. I have the work brought right up to me so I'm not reaching for it and again slouching or, you know, bending my back at the wrong angle. And then, yeah, being able to begin and end from the front means I'm not having to twist my spine around all the time. So that helps too. So, yeah. I can get soreness very easily. I have to be careful when I'm wrapping gifts too, because uh, if I do it on the floor, all the bending around the package, my lower back starts screaming at me. So yeah, it's not, it's not good. Okay, it is a little closer to carry this up and to the right. So that's what I'm gonna do, rather than carrying it over to the left, because yeah, that's a longer carry. So I'll add a new thread for those stitches when I get to them. So as you can see, I'm not following a strict diagonal, I sort of haven't filled in this bit yet, but I'll come to it. It's just sort of, this is the way the colors are going. So I just sort of, sort of keep going this direction and then I'll head back up and fill in again. Yeah, Like I often say, it's a rough guide for me. It's not strict. whatever seems to make the most sense and also just what I feel like is how I stitch. Ah, so my reward for all that confetti is now I get a few stitches in a row to take a bit of a brain break there. So yeah, that confetti can get tiring sometimes. You do have to think a fair amount and count does take some brain power okay the rate I'm going, I might reach 70 or even 75% by the end of this month. We'll see. But of course, I am going to put this aside for a few days and do some work on my firefly. Yeah. Like I said, I'm, I aim to get 1% of that one done a month. So it will eventually get finished. Like I said, only take me eight years. <laughs> Unless I get to some point where I decide I want to work on that one as my main piece. We'll see. But yeah, so far the plan is this one. And then I'm going to work on the Marvelous Garden, the Peacocks. And then I'm probably going to do Deer Creek because that fabric is ready to go. That's the one where I started Marvelous Garden the first time and messed it up. And rather than picking all of that out, I decided instead to use that piece of cloth for a smaller pattern and just cut off the part that I messed up. It's not like I can really bother saving the, the thread or anything, you know. If you've ever pulled out a bunch of stitches, once you pull them out, you know, the thread has gotten so fuzzy and stripped that there is no point. 
and trying to save it. So, and often when you have to pull out so much, you know, it was like all one big area of like 10,000 stitches, there's a good chance you're going to put a hole in your fabric or wear it out funny or whatever, which can be fixed, but I figure I'll just sacrifice a small piece of that fabric and not bother having to do all that work, undo all that work. Cause that's just no fun. Yeah, I may have to pick out a little bit of it because I counted the squares and there may be, but I'm only going to have to pick out maybe, you know, 200 stitches rather than over 10,000. So yeah, <laughs> I'm going to go with that. Thought I remembered this is a fairly long piece, so we're gonna. Oops. Oh, that might uh, thread better. No, nope, I did have the eye. I thought maybe I didn't. Yeah, there we go. So I'm gonna carry this down and back up, and then back up, and then up some more, and probably back down. So I kind of will take the thread in both directions. That often happens when it's a bigger section of the same color. I was thinking maybe this could be the Zora Lynx guitar, but it's the wrong color because his guitar was kind of like a big fish skeleton. So it would have been like more blues and whites if it was so yeah I liked all the different uh, instruments that uh, that he had I thought it was interesting too there was one of the side quests in um, the bar and uh, the band cancelled and so the leader has you um as you play for him in each of your different forms, because of course you have the pipes with the Deku Link and then the guitar with the Zora Link and the drums with uh, Goron Link and then of course the Ocarina with original Link. And um, yeah, when you first start adding the instruments, I thought, oh, that sounds terrible. But then at the end when they're all together, I don't know, it's like the dissonance works and it actually sounded pretty cool, so. There's been some uh, videos I saw on YouTube where people played different songs with uh, different tracks of the different ocarina instruments, which was pretty cool. There was uh, one that did um, Africa by Toto. And of course they're limited because there's only a certain number of notes on those. There isn't a whole scale of notes. So yeah, you have to kind of get creative with it to play different songs, but it's pretty cool. There was one, somebody did Careless Whisper, but they couldn't do the whole thing. They did the saxophone, um, little, you know, and it was so, did the, you know, D, 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 and, uh, you know, D, 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 but then it couldn't do any of the, the up sound of it. Yeah, unfortunately, because it didn't have the right notes, so. Yeah, I think the Deku Pipes was my favorite of all the Link instruments. You know what? Let me take a look. Here, this other thread is long. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I did say that for these stitches over here, I was gonna add a new thread, but actually I think it will work for me to just carry this one back up instead, yeah. So what I'm gonna do is park that there. And then, okay, I have to go down a little bit more, 38.57. Yeah, sometimes I end up traveling up and down along the uh, diagonal edge a fair amount to keep from closing stuff in. Oh, that's okay. It keeps me from getting bored. Twenty nine thousand one hundred and two total. So. 
Yeah, I should hit 30,000 in a couple of days. And that is the wrong spot. Let's not do that. Yeah. So 36,000 will be exactly two thirds. Because this is a 48,000. Yeah, so each quarter is a, or no, actually, would that be three quarters? I don't know. I can't math. I suck. <laughs> yeah, actually, no, I'm, I'm wrong. I'm thinking 36,000 would be 75%. So, yeah. I don't have a math brain, so, yeah. Oh, silly me. I didn't need to end this off yet. Ah. Yeah, there's one more stitch to do with it. Ah, was not paying attention. That's okay. I hadn't cut it yet so we're fine okay so again gonna stitch in more than one direction with this thread yeah it was funny too saying the side quest where you played the music in the Romani bar or no the milk bar it was the yeah the the milk was from the Chateau Romani was the special milk that could uh, give you unlimited uh, magic meter. But anyway, um, you play the different uh, instruments in the bar and uh, he has different spotlights for each form to stand under. And so just for fun, I kind of, I tried going under the wrong one. He'd say, no, no, you're supposed to go under this one, you know, until you get it right. And then there was a weird glitch at the end. After that, you got the mask. I can't remember what it was called. Was it the Gorman Brothers ass mask or something? Something like that. But anyway, um, he, uh, it's the crying mask. But anyway, um, after you get that mask, if you put the bunny ears and walk on, he walks super fast, like even twice the speed that he normally does with the bunny ears. Yeah, it was like a weird programming glitch. Yeah. It was like they programmed him to walk fast without the, as like as fast as he normally does with the bunny ears when he's not wearing them. So then if you put them on, it gives him like double speed. <laughs> yeah. But only for that one section, after you do that and walk up the stairs out of the bar, he goes, yeah, double speed. And then once he gets outside, it was, it was correct again. So yeah, it was a weird glitch. Okay. See how long this one is. how it does that it gets a knot like that very irritating though what we can get out of this thread. Probably going to have to add a new one anyway.
Okay, so I think I'm going to call it a day there. Yeah, we got quite a bit done today. So um, as usual, thank you so much for joining me today and hope to see you here again another time. All right, thanks everyone. Bye.